Welcome to the closing ceremony for our Science Institute program for the summer of 2019. Thank you so much, parents, for joining us today. We're privileged to have had the honor of working with your students this week. And to friends and families that have joined us, we're inspired by your support and by all of the things that we've been able to do and all of the learning and fun that we've had with your students this week as well. Thank you for joining us for this year's Sturgeon City Institutes. To the candidates for the title of Fellow of the Science Institute, we say, you have earned the right to be called a fellow. I am Paula Farnell. I am the Institute's director, and I'm also the director here for the Sturgeon City Nonprofit. I'd also like to give recognition to Dr. Don Herring, who is the chairman of the board of directors for the Sturgeon City Nonprofit, and to Mr. Glenn Hargett, our assistant city manager, and the lovely mastermind behind the majority of this program for now 21 years. So thank you very much for your support. And I'm proud of the partnerships that have been able to create this program and continue this program for so long. Without the joint support of the City of Jacksonville, the Sturgeon City Nonprofit, the Onslow County Schools, and many other partners that join us in sponsoring and supporting this program, this would not be possible. And we all do what we do because we love seeing the enjoyment that your students have with this program every year. And especially those that continue to come back, we hope your students will join us next year. We'll talk during this presentation about some of those opportunities for them as well. As I've mentioned, this makes the 21st edition of the Sturgeon City Institutes. You are here for the Science Institute, which your students have been participating in this week, which is one of our longest running institute programs. But there are other institutes that have been underway this week at the Sturgeon City site, as well as other sites throughout the community and the county. And those include our Science Academy, our biology group from this year, our Public Safety Institute, and our Art Institute. And those students will be participating in their closing ceremonies later on this afternoon. And it's been a joy to be able to watch them take part in these institutes, again, with partnerships. Um, the teachers that teach this program, our Onslow County school teachers, and our city staff that help with this program. Our other institutes are led, our Science Academy, um, by an instructor from White Oak High School. Our Public Safety Institute, led by a combination of our police, fire, and EMS departments, which is a great opportunity for the students. And our Art Institute, led through the Council for the Arts, and one of their board members and local artists. And for those participating in the Science Institute, you'll be eligible to join in these programs beginning next summer. And the tentative dates for next summer Sturgeon City Institutes are June 15th through the 19th. So keep an eye out for further information about that as we get closer to that date. I'm going to tell you guys a little bit about Sturgeon City and the story about where we came from and what we're all about. We're all here as a result of a vision, a vision that Jacksonville can be a better place, a commitment by the elected leaders to our city, and a desire to inspire youth, young people, to return to our community or to stay here for their education or after their education and to become valuable community members. For over 40 years, the city of Jacksonville and others discharged their wastewater into Wilson Bay and the New River. And unfortunately, we discovered some severe damage had taken place when in 1995, over 23 million gallons of hog waste were spilled into the river. And many people expected fish kills and signs of degradation following that spill. And when those signs did not come to the magnitude that was expected, the true damage was realized, that the river and the waterways pretty much had no life left to damage. And plans were already in place at that time to begin building the new land application plant knew then, over 20 years ago, that we now operate at, that we now send all of our wastewater to for the city of Jacksonville. Military installations have also made changes since to their wastewater treatment systems to help stop at least putting new pollution out into the river and the waterway. And many spoke out. Many community members and many city, city officials came out because this was a wake-up call to our citizens. We take severe pride, strong pride in our rivers and waterways in this community. We always have. Many remembered growing up here, swimming here, fishing here, boating here, paddling here, enjoying these rivers, and they wanted to see that come back again. And so the city chose to take responsibility and stand up and say that we will act to clean this up. And so began the process to be able to do environmental restoration, which then led into the continuing environmental education here at this site. 
And what a joy to have seen in the very first year of our Surgeon City Institutes in 1999, which was only one year after this plant had closed in 1998, that one of the students participating in that institute found some of our very first signs of life. He was actually able to find a rangia clam um, living down there. And those of you that know waterways and systems, our benthic community is the base of our aquatic community. And so seeing those signs come back was the first sign that life would then return to the river. And so our efforts were realized much quicker than we even thought they would be and continue to be realized now over 20 years in the future. And just this week, we had the opening ceremony for what you're now sitting in, our brand new Sturgeon City Environmental Education Center, which has always been one of the phases of the redevelopment of this site and the reuse of this site. It's been authorized by the city of Jacksonville and will be occupied and operated by the Sturgeon City nonprofit. And it's a tangible connection to our stewardship of this new river and a true feather in the cap to everyone who has taken part in these programs over the years, who has supported our organization and our community and a true feather in the cap to the city officials who have helped for years, many sets of city officials on this project and these programs to be able to have this center on this site and continue to tell the story of what took place and what has been done here. These institutes carry forth that promise that our city officials have made, that moral obligation to restore the quality to this water, to bring life back to the water, and to continue to tell that story through the education programs that we continue to provide, hoping to build environmental and community stewards that will benefit our community and see the value in our community and the valuable role they each play in our community. During this week, your students have had their adventure documented. Some of the documentation is available on our blog, which you can get to by going to www.sturgeoncity.org or WordPress backslash Sturgeon City. And they'll tell you some more about that here shortly and you'll get to hear all about what they've been doing this week. Also, we utilize a Flickr site, um, Facebook, G10 television, and YouTube. All the pictures that are taken, thousands from over the week, uh, will be uploaded to some of these sites. Some videos have been made, which will be available on some of these sites. And the ceremony is being recorded, will be available on YouTube, and continue to be shown on G10 um, for days and weeks to come. So please keep an eye out for those and continue to enjoy watching the things that your students have been doing throughout this week. And the Sturgeon City Institutes are also available on Facebook um, through our Sturgeon City Facebook page. And of course, you can always find all of these by going through the Sturgeon City website as well. With that being said, we're gonna move on and begin our recognition um, of our instructors and our students for this week. So again, your students have been participating in the Sturgeon City Science Institute this week. And science is about observation and study. So our observation is that the students that have joined us this week are now in a unique group. They're part of the class of 2019 for the Sturgeon City Science Institute. And they're part of a select group of students who've been allowed to participate with us this week and be a part of this institute. Someone thought that you, these students participating, had a special talent. They recognized that talent in you and saw that you should participate in this program and be able to join us this week. And you obviously are part of a group who took some initiative of your own to be able to join in and participate with us this week. We appreciate that and recognize you as a special group. To the candidates for the title of fellows, when we began the institute, we offered that you would have competent people as part of this institute and as your instructors. And I now offer one of them to you that has traveled with you on your journey here. I would like to introduce Ms. Pat Donovan Brandenburg, who is our stormwater manager for the city of Jacksonville. Thank you. Um, I've had the privilege of being here with the Institute uh, since day one. So 21 years of doing this has been a very long time and we've worked with some really great teachers as well as great students. Um, I hope that your child shared with you all of the things that they participated in this week because science for us should be fun. Science for us should be out in the field. Instead of seeing a picture of a blue crab, we catch one in a net and then hand it to the student. There's more of a connection uh, with the organisms that way. Um, we don't let them pinch them. We, are, we do keep the kids safe. Uh, that's our number one priority every year. That's why we've been able to go forth for the last 21 years. 
um, is safety is always a priority. But again, science is about having fun uh, and getting outside instead of being inside all the time. Kids need some fresh air and some sunshine. Uh, did they come home tired and, and did they go to bed real nice? See, you're welcome, right? You want them here all summer. They were also probably pretty stinky and, and muddy, but that was because the goal was to take them to a different marine habitat every day in order to compare to the day prior or the day after. So there was a, a lily pond involved, there was a creek involved, there was an intercoastal salt marsh, the ocean, there was a young pine forest involved, a maritime forest, uh, and then of course we put everybody on the New River yesterday. Um, it's very important for us that they connected that way. And the, on Monday, everybody was very quiet and nobody knew one another. But by Tuesday at the beach, everyone knew everyone. And they were all helping each other out. And even though they came from different middle schools and they're going to different high schools, there was a connection and a synergy between the kids instantaneously. We saw it on Tuesday. And it's always a good thing to see because, um, you know, there's competition between schools, but we are still one community, Onslow County. So without a further ado, I would like to introduce the team that kept your students tired, fed, um, safe all week long. Uh, and first and foremost is Miss Julie Bale. Uh, Julie has been with Newbridge Middle School for a very long time, and I think of the 21 years, she's been with us 20 18, so almost as long as Glenn and I. <laughs> so, and then Jules, if you'll come up. And then we also have Colin. And we have Sean. And of course, now all of these guys work at Newbridge Middle School, and they're awesome, awesome teachers. The only high school teacher that we have is also awesome. And so any of the students that are going to White Oak High School, he is the leader of the green team. He is phenomenal. And you got to get your kids involved in it. So Brandon. A blue one. And then, of course, the rest of our staff, um, which could not have, we couldn't have gotten anything done this week without them. Our staff, the stormwater water quality staff, was here every morning between 6.30 and 7. They got all of the nets, all of the waders, all of the scientific equipment that was being used by the students every single day, prepped, loaded, ready to go. At the end of the day, they were breaking it all down, cleaning it, uh, and, and getting ready for the next day. So we're going to introduce our staff as well. So our water quality technician is Aaron. I could not exist without this fella. He keeps me sane. Uh, our, we have three summer interns. We're very blessed. Um, every year we go through the interview process, and oh my gosh, we had some of the best interns this year. From, uh, two from UNCW, so Juliana and Aaron. And then we had a graduate from the University of South Carolina, and his name is Brian. And, and again, uh, this is your team that kept everybody happy and healthy and safe and engaged in science all week long. Can we do a big round? And I need to thank one more person because one more person um, 
kept me grounded throughout the week a whole lot. And sometimes she doesn't get the thanks that she deserves. And that's our director, Miss Paula. So. And then our bus driver, unfortunately, is with another group, and she's driving, and we're also going to give her flowers. Her name is Sean. So, Miss Julie, I'm going to let you take it from here, right? Oh, wait, we're going to let um, Paula have it again. My bad. <laughs> Thanks for bringing with us this, guys this week, guys. I like to just say real quick, I really want to thank everybody. Um, they've been super flexible this week. Um, we've had a very different year this year trying to be using, using this center, a combination of Newbridge, launching canoes at a different launch, and working at all different sites throughout the city. And I've had extra events this week thrown at all of us, so I greatly appreciate all of the staff's extra support and flexibility this week. So thank you so much. Well, we're going to do that. All right, so good morning. I am Julie Bale. I'm the director of the um, Science Institute, and it has been my distinct honor and pleasure this week to be with your students a lot. They were very cooperative and amiable, and every time we asked them, you need to haul this here, bring this there, get in that riverbed, take that net, and get, they were so cooperative, and they gave 100% all week, even when they were really super, super tired and worn out. I cannot say enough good things about this group of students. And I cannot wait to see them next year at future institutes and hopefully around Onslow County at the different high schools. We're going to start next with the Moon Group and their presentation and let them get started too. They're going to show you about animal differentiation. Welcome, we are the Moon Group, and um, we had a lot of fun this week. We found some really interesting stuff and really cool animals, and that's what we we're going to present to you today. So on Monday, we went to a water treatment plant and saw an American alligator. <coughs> The American alligator was once an endangered species, but is now thriving thanks to the Endangered Species Act. These muscular animals have lizard-like armored bodies, muscular tails, and very powerful jaws. Um, and... <laughs> uh, got my lines. We also <clears throat> saw a banded water snake, and the banded water snake is also known as a southern water snake. They're non-venomous and semi-aquatic, which is why they're called water snake. The snakes are mostly found in eastern and middle eastern United States and mostly freshwater habitats, and the banded water snakes are known for mimicking snakes, and they copy bigger venomous. So on Tuesday, we went to the Intracoastal Waterway in Onzo Beach at Camp Lejeune, and we saw the pink shrimp. They are one of the most important commercial fishery species in the United States. Their main habitats are seagrass beds and estuaries. Females are generally much larger than males. 85% of shrimp caught are harvested in the west coast of Florida. A lot of pink shrimp contain cancer-fighting materials. 123.3 million metric tons of shrimp were caught between 1987 and 2001. We also seen a pipefish, which are very slender fish that has amazing ability to camouflage while blending in expertly with slender seagrasses and weeds among which it lives. They align themselves in a vertical position and sway back and forth among the seagrass. Wednesday at Sturgeon City, we saw the... Paula? Gila, Gila monster, thanks to Jen Davis with the co-venom trauma solution, who brought the Gila monster for us to learn about. 
The Gila monster is a species of venomous lizard that is native to southwest United States and northwest Mexico and Sonar. Their skin helps them camouflage and their claws are used for digging. At, salt, at the salt marsh, we saw the green anole. The Carolina anole is an arboreal lizard native to south United States and introduced elsewhere. Male anoles use their dewlap to get females' attention by making their dewlap red and nodding their head. On, thir on Thursday, we saw an osprey at Wilson Bay. The osprey has many names. It goes by seahawk, river hawk, and fish hawk. They are diurnal, meaning they are active during the day. It is a large raptor which can grow from 60 centimeters to 180 centimeters wing to wing. Its coloring is usually brown on the wings and predominantly gray on the head and stomach. The osprey can live anywhere next to a body of water where it can feed on fish. We had a lot of fun this week, and we appreciate all of these, what all of these wonderful people have put together. We want to thank all of our counselors and helpers, and that's the end of our presentation. Thank you. Hi, my name's uh, Brandon Dillman. I've been a, a privilege to lead this uh, moon group this week along with my colleague, Mr. Sean Kogsrud. Um, we're going to go ahead and recognize uh, our recipients of their awards this week of, of the Active Fellow. So we're going to start with Miss Victoria Brady. <laughs> Isaiah Cooper. Ramaya Current. Joshua Davis. Tyler Ferrant. Christina Gribben. Austin Hobbs. Cyrus Jocelyn, Leilani Medina, Brianna Moeller, Kiera Moore, India Parker, Jack Rausch. Grace Van Essendelf. Thank you again and congratulations on your fellowship. While we are the Earth Group, this week was out of this world. Here is a snapshot of our adventures. On our visit to Southwest Creek, we tested the water quality and looked for new organisms. The water quality was fairly ideal for the small habitat. Contributing tests were the pH at 7.21, temperature at 24.8 degrees Celsius, and a low turbidity prior to when students stirred up loose sediments. Animal life was quite diverse, consisting of gambusia or mosquito fish, tadpoles, leopard frogs, an unidentified eel, and abandoned water snake. Plant life consisted of duckweed and wax myrtle. Our habitat was a great example of a flourishing community due to the biodiversity and water quality throughout.
Our next ecosystem is the maritime forest, which is located on a barrier island. The specific one we went to was Onzo Beach. This is a marine base which can affect the quality of life there. Since it's a barrier island, it also gets hit by hurricanes and severe weather often. So in the for forest, trees are short and close together to minimize damage. The forest uh, has an array of plant life, which includes the lob lolly, Atlantic red cedar, wax myrtle, prickly pear, cactus, and pennywort. The, the pennywort is interesting because it is edible. It tastes kind of like broccoli and has a bad aftertaste. The intracoastal waterway was difficult to maneuver in due to the mud and it didn't smell pleasant. Although the waterway didn't have a great smell, its water quality was excellent. Brackish water and high dissolved oxygen allowed for a di diverse group of organisms to live. Some, animals of the, some examples of the animals were hermit crabs, flounders, oysters, and stingrays. The habitat of the intracoastal waterway has a more diverse wildlife than Anzal Beach due to the better water quality, water quality and the environmental conditions. After we left the intercoastal waterway, we went to Onslow Beach to test the water quality. And it was a very harsh environment, but the water quality was excellent for the beach. And there was little to no life above the tidal zone. There was just crabs, stink bugs, and birds. The last ecosystem we visited was the Sturgeon City Salt Marsh, which consisted of many different types of plants and animals. Some of the many animals that dwell in the marsh are bay anchovies, gambusia, crab, deer, cone jellies, oysters, cardinals, ospreys, and barnacles. Some of the different plant species that exist in the marsh are marsh grass, alligator weed, wax myrtle, and pitcher plants. The water quality in the marsh had higher salinity and pH than normal due to drought conditions. However, the water quality is still very good and supports a variety of organisms living in the marsh. As a result of the city of Jacksonville's Wilson Bay Initiative, millions of oysters have revitalized this once dead body of water. On Wednesday, we were part of this dedication of this state-of-the-art environmental education center. This center will continue to teach the generations to come. Thank you. At this point, we're going to take some time to recognize our Earth Group members. Um, Jacob Akers. <laughs> Alexandra Brady. Angela Capuana. Taylor Ferrant. Morgan Gardner. Caitlin Garino, <laughs> Ashley Hayes, Jarrett McDowell, <laughs> Kylie Ann Pascara, <laughs> Josiah Pickett, <laughs> Stephen Grant Radcliffe. Gracie Ratz, Rots, <laughs> I knew better. <laughs> Jeremy Snedeker, James Sides, and John Toth. Thank you very much.
Messy. Educational. Important. Nerdy. Safe. Inspiring. Making the future better. Resourceful. Extraordinary. Green. Unpredictable. Is a role model. Science. Exciting. Eco-friendly. Fun. Mushy. The future. Thank you guys, and with that, um, I'm going to talk a little bit more about um, some exciting things for our future here with our Environmental Education Center. So as we've mentioned, we are now sitting today in our brand new Sturgeon City Environmental Education Center. We are so happy that we've finally been able to have the opening for this facility this week. And I would like to just show you a couple potential visions for the future as we continue to do additional work to reuse and modify this former wastewater treatment plant site. So we are now inside the educational center and one option we've talked about for many years is converting what's sort of behind me here and out these doors, the former bio tower, which was one of the last structures built on this site, into a potential display area where we'd reuse the now empty concrete structure to be able to tell the story of how the Wilson Bay Initiative, which was the restoration effort at this site, first launched and began to take place and continue to tell that story for our community potentially with different options for interior exhibits, showing different displays of how the remediation took place at this site, how we cleaned up the pollution, and adding things on top of the bio tower. This structure um, provides a great view um, downriver out towards the bridges. Um, at the time that this structure was built, um, it was actually one of the tallest structures in Jacksonville. Um, so it still provides a pretty neat view out onto the waterway. And one thing that's important to keep in mind is that it was this time of year that the true partnership between the Sturgeon City nonprofit and the city of Jacksonville um, really began or was really solidified as back a few years ago, um, not too, too many from now, the first check um, was presented during the Sturgeon City Institute week um, to the city of Jacksonville from the Sturgeon City nonprofit, showing our responsibility for our portion of this building and this project that we work with with the city and continuing that promise of our partnership. And you can see here the students even formed our lovely favorite shape of a sturgeon um, to get a nice photo op for that check presentation. And then here we are today with a vision of our complete center. So it's nice to be able to be here in our facility and now you're a part of that vision for this center and you too can dream about what this site can continue to mean into the future. And hopefully Sturgeon City will be a part of all of your futures as you have joined us this week and hopefully continue to join us in future years. And some might be wondering all this talk about Sturgeon, and I'm not gonna lie, we get a lot of questions about the name. And so the answer is simple. Sturgeon are a bottom feeder, and they're considered a keystone species. They're very sensitive to water quality, and they're a great indicator of that water quality. As many of you may know or may not know, sturgeon were once prevalent here in this area, and for many reasons, um, but pollution being one of them, the population has severely declined. And it would be a severe feather in our cap, a serious feather in our cap, if that sturgeon population was to return to this area. Of course, a multitude of factors are involved in that, but bringing back the water quality as we have been able to do and the other life to this area as we have been able to do is a great step in the right direction. 
And so we hope that we continue that success and continue to spread that story here in our community, in our region, in our state, and hopefully across the nation. And as your students maybe continue out into other places as they continue through high school and out into the rest of their career, they can continue to tell this story and share it with others. There are also many different species of sturgeon, many different varieties. And we feel like that's a great way to demonstrate the many different people and types of communities that take place within our community that work together to make Jacksonville and Onslow County such a wonderful place that we're able to take pride in. And the city has stepped forth in many ways over the years in trying to continue to take pride in our youth. That's one of the things that this program is focused on. And um, one of the best ways to demonstrate that um, was the formation of our Jacksonville Youth Council, which took place right around the same time that this Sturgeon City project was beginning. It actually started through um, a partnership with the Onslow County School Board in 1998 and it became a voice for the young people in our community, for them to have a direct way to interact with our city officials and with other folks in our community to tell what they were looking for and what they would like to see and be able to take pride in their community. And so with that, I'm gonna um, have a few folks I've asked to come join me, um, step up front here with me. I'm gonna let them introduce themselves um, and I'm gonna have them tell you guys a little bit about the Youth Council. Hi guys, uh, my name is Amara Moeller. I'm the Vice Chairman for the Jacksonville Youth Council. I'm a rising senior and I go to Here's Skin Academy. Hi guys, my name is Cameron Davis. I am part of the Executive Committee. I represent Onslow Early College and I also go to Onslow Early College. And I'm a rising junior. Hello, my name is Sarah Simmons. I go to Onslow Early College. I'm a rising sophomore and I plan to apply to be an officer. Hello everyone, I'm Cyan Harper. I go to White Oak High School. I'm a rising senior and I'm going for the White Oak seat. <clears throat> Hello, my name is Kenea Harper. Um, I'm a rising junior and I'm just a member of JYC. So the Jacksonville Youth Council is the city council for um, all the youth in Onslow County, but mainly we um, serve all the high school students in the area. Uh, it's, avail it's open for rising freshmen up, and our meetings are the first Thursday of every month of the school year. Our first, our first um, meeting for this new school year will be September, um, the very first Thursday at 6 o'clock. Um, our meetings are held at the city council chambers. If you have any questions, uh, you can look us up on the Onslow County website. So also with JYC, we have several smaller committees. So we have Harmony, which is a youth philanthropy group. We're assigned a certain amount of money at the beginning of the year, and we have to choose what organizations we want to give the money to. We also have different parties that we throw, like Christmas parties and senior send-offs that we plan for, like, seniors. So we also, the board are usually, we usually head those parties, and we usually plan those. And Sarah will tell us why she joined JYC and why she likes it. JYC has inspired me to speak out and become a motivator for other people. And it's helped me demonstrate leadership skills and presentation skills. Um, going off of what Amara and Cameron said, we also do a lot of community service. And it's a really good place to bring different people from different schools and other opportunities where you wouldn't meet them otherwise. Um, you can get SAT hours, um, it's a great way to link up, and we have, a, we have some networking practice as other people come in and give presentations. Um, if we have events of our, at our own schools, we can tell JYC about them and have people come out and support. Well, I'm going to just tell you why I joined JYC. I joined JYC because my mom told me about it, and it really is like a really good council to join. 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 Yeah, it's a really good council to, to join with a lot of different youth, and we do a lot of different things. We also did, um, when we went to help with the, we like volunteered at the Onzo Memorial, not Onzo Memorial, I forgot what it was called, but it was this place where we volunteered and we helped serve to the poor and things like that, and it was really nice actually. I did a really good job. So. 
So yeah, you're all invited to come. Anybody can come to the meetings. Um, we'd really like to see you. Thank you. Thank you, guys. So as they mentioned, um, the meetings are generally in the council chambers. Um, sometimes they also utilize our youth center right across from City Hall downtown. So please keep in mind um, any interest in the youth council. We also had some flyers out front on the table about a youth empowerment series that the youth council is helping to put on with the city of Jacksonville throughout the summer. There's still several dates upcoming. So if you're interested in that, be sure to grab one of the flyers on our front table um, on your way out. And with that, we are going to move on to the final acts of our ceremony. So we've mentioned this term fellow a couple times during this presentation. So just real quick, we like to define that as a member of a learned society. And for the Science Institute candidates, we told you that at the end of the journey, on your quest of knowledge, those who complete the trip will be given the title of fellow. You will be a part of a special group, this learned society. So now we are going to administer the oath for the title of fellow. Ms. Pat Donovan Brandenburg is going to come back up and join me. Okay. Test. Okay, if Science Institute and our leaders would please stand up and raise your right hand because this is an oath. And when we see you out and about, you've, we're going to ask you if you remember your oath. So I'm going to say, listen first, I, and then I'm going to say, state your name. Now, don't say state your name. Actually say your name, okay? Y'all ready? So I, state your name. I, Pat Donovan Brandenburg, accept the challenge of the Sturgeon City Science Institute. To help others appreciate our environment. That's fine. To help others share my knowledge about our habitat. To inspire others to care for living things around us. To continue my knowledge. This I do. As a, fellow as a fellow of the Sturgeon City Science Institute. Sturgeon City Science Institute. Yay. Congratulations. Congratulations. So the time has now come to close the 2019 Science Institute. The success of any edition of these institutes is in no small part a partnership of everyone involved. And it's successful vision of this to be able to see today and to look into the future. So it's not measured just by what we're seeing today, but what we continue to see from your students, from these staff, from the parents and folks that have joined us and participated with us this week. We encourage the, particip the participants to continue to participate in the other activities provided by the community, such as the Jacksonville Youth Council and other opportunities for them to get involved in our community and continue to have a voice. As we talked about throughout this week, we talked about the concept of synergy so many times. We talked about how a trickle and a wave and a movement. So continue to use your voice to join with other voices and be able to make a difference and be a valuable communi community member here in our community. The 21st anniversary of the Sturgeon City Institutes needs to be acknowledged. The 21 years of support by the Jacksonville Mayor and City Council providing the funding, inspiration, and implementation of these institutes. And I hope you'll share your appreciation for these institutes to the mayor and council, as well as the leadership of the city of Jacksonville. And also very thankful for the continued support over these 21 years of the Onslow County School Board and our Onslow County Schools. They've been very involved in supporting this and implementing this program, providing us space at Newbridge Middle School and other locations, and also, of course, our partnership with the staff from the schools that help us out with this program. So we also say thank you to the Onslow County Schools for their continued support. And next year, I hope that you will join us again as you've been able to have some insight this week into the potential programs that you can now participate in. But for now, we send forth the 21st iteration of the Science Institutes with the hope that they will inspire others with their knowledge and continue to be valuable community members. So with the participants acknowledged and with the review of the work of the Institutes and documentation, documentation excuse me, made available, I therefore declare the 2019 Sturgeon City Science Institute adjourned.